let's prove this result that if f is differentiable at x equals a, then f is also continuous at x equals a. So in order to do the proof, of course, first we need to know what these things mean in precise mathematical terms. So what does it mean for f to be continuous at x equals a? That's what we're trying to prove. So we need to show what does it mean for f to be continuous? That's what we need to show. Well, we need to show the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. That's the definition of f being continuous at x equals a. The limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. And what do we get to assume to show that? We get to assume that f is differentiable. So we're saying if f is differentiable, so that's what we start from, then it's continuous. So we're trying to use the fact that it's differentiable to show this. What does it mean to be differentiable? Well, to be differentiable, that means that the derivative is defined. So remember that the derivative is defined at a. So we know that this thing, f prime of a. So we need to show that, and I'll say, we know, oops, f prime of a, which is, what is that? If you write it, the definition of the derivative, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So we know this limit exists. In other words, we know this number is defined, f prime of a. We know that um, is defined. OK, now remember, there's another way of writing this derivative. You could also write this as the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So remember, that's the sort of other definition of the derivative. It's the same thing. It's just you're sort of renaming variables. So. <clears throat> So, right, so if you let h equal x minus a, well, then you'll see that if h is equal to x minus a, then what's x? You'll work it out, you'll get a plus h. And so you'll have an h in the bottom and an a plus h in here, and then you realize, okay, if x is approaching a, then x minus a, x and a are getting close together, so x minus a is going to 0. But you defined h to be x minus a, so your h is going to 0. So if you just let h equal x minus a and work out everything, you'll see that these mean exactly the same thing, just written in terms of different variables. OK, so good. So for this proof, it's going to be more useful to write the derivative this way. It's the same thing. So we want to show that this limit is x approaches a of f of x is f of a. And what we know is that this limit exists. So this limit gives us some number. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say, OK, look at this. The limit as x approaches a of f of x, I'm going to do this trick, which is I'm going to complicate this. So there's simplifying and there's complicating. So I'm going to complicate this by, instead of taking the limit as x approaches a of f of x, I'm going to take the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a plus f of a. Now, because I'm adding and subtracting the same thing, and it's even a constant, f of a, it's some number. I'm assuming a is in the domain of f here. And f of a is some number. Then, of course, if a is not in the domain of f, then it can't be continuous or differentiable at x equals a. So I'm adding and subtracting the same number. So, so it's not changing the value of this thing. So this, I can put an equal sign here because I'm just adding and subtracting some constant. OK, good. And now I'm going to break up this limit into these two. Now this is by limit law number one, right? The, the sum of the limit of a sum is the sum of the two limits. So I'm just thinking of this as the first piece of my limit, and this is the second piece. So I have this plus this. I break it up as limit of the first thing plus limit of the second thing. And I'm allowed to do that so long as both of these exist. So now, why did I do that? You'll see, because I'm trying to make this look more like this. 
I'm trying to evaluate this limit, and what I know is that this one exists. So I'm trying to make this look more like that one. <coughs> so let's try this, okay? <clears throat> let's try and figure out what this one is. Why? Because, look, we're actually almost done here. This limit over here, what's this one? The limit as x approaches a of f of a. Well, this doesn't have any x's in it. This is just a constant, right? I just added and subtracted a constant, like I said, f of a. So this is the limit of a constant. There's no x in it. So therefore, that limit is just f of a. And that's exactly what I want. I want the limit as x approaches a of f of x to be f of a. So, what I need to show at this point, as soon as I show this, I've done my proof, I need to show that this is zero. Because remember, I'm trying to show that this limit as x approaches a of f of x is f of a, and I have the limit as x approaches a of f of x, and I got something plus f of a. So if I can show that something is a zero, then I'm done, because I showed this limit is f of a. So we just, to finish off, we just need to show that this thing is zero. So how are we going to do that? Well, watch this. I'm going to examine this thing f of x minus f of a. So f of x minus f of a. And similarly to the way I added and subtracted something in here, to sort of make things more complicated, but make them look more like... Um, the derivative, essentially, I'm going to do the same idea here, except I'm going to take f of x minus f of a, and I'm going to multiply and divide by the same thing, in this case x minus a. And this time you can see right away why I'm doing that, because now look, I know that this limit exists, and I have this expression right here. So I'm allowed to do that so long as I'm not dividing by zero. <coughs> But you see what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the limit on both sides. f of x approaches a. f of x minus f of a. Which is exactly what I have here. I want to show this is 0. So I take the limit on the left side, side here, and I'm going to take the limit on the right side here. Limit f of x approaches a of this whole blob. f of x minus f of a over x minus a. times x minus a. Okay. Now we're almost done. Because look, I can break this up. This is again by limit laws. That the limit of a product is going to be the product of these two limits. So long as, bo as both of these limits exist. Times the limit as x approaches a of x minus. So now I have a product of two limits. <clears throat> now look at this one. The limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Well, that is the definition of the derivative at a. So this thing right down here is f prime of a. So this guy right here is f prime of a. And this guy over here, what's this? The limit as x approaches a of x minus a. Well, the difference between x and a as x approaches a goes to 0. So this limit is 0. Because if x is getting closer and closer to a, then the difference between x and a goes to 0. So I get f prime of a times 0, which is equal to 0. So I'm done. So let's review what happened, right? We wanted to show that this limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. And the way we did it was I added and subtracted f of a in here. I broke this limit into two, the sum of two limits. This one clearly is f of a because this is a constant in here. And I had to show that this goes to zero. If I can show this goes to zero, that's gone, then I have the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. So that means f is continuous at x equals a. And how did I show that this was 0? Well, I just wrote f of x minus f of a as itself divided and multiplied by x minus a. And then I took the limit on both sides. 
I use the limit law to break it up. Am I allowed to do that so long as both these limits exist? But they do. This one exists by assumption, because I'm assuming f is differentiable. I'm proving that if f is differentiable, then it's continuous. So if f is differentiable, then I know that this limit is some number f prime of a. And this limit must be 0, because just looking at it, if x approaches a, then the difference between x, is, x and a goes to 0. So therefore, this limit, the one I had up here, is 0. And I'm done. f is continuous at x equals a.